Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. God is good, I tell you. Yes, indeed. I love praising him. I love thanking him. Oh, he's so wonderful. <laughs> My friend, you better find Jesus before too late. You better find him before it's too late. You better call him before it's too late. Jesus, Jesus, help me, help me, help me, Lord. Somebody help, help my cry. Jesus, oh Jesus, I need you now. Help me. Help me, I can't make it, I can't make it without you, Jesus. All right, my name is Tori Lynn Adviento. I've grown up in Evansville since I was seven years old. Um, and um, I met the people of praise about, what, five years ago? Okay, put it like this. I was just using, I was using drugs, not for weeks at a time, but for months at a time. And I mean, I was using them all day, every single day, when my brother didn't think I was gonna make it. You know, my family was worried about me. Um, I even shut my kids out and shut everybody out. Even my mother was sick and I just didn't really want to be bothered with her because I wanted to do drugs and stuff. Uh, the enemy had an attack on me, for real. After the missionaries come into my life, God has always been with me, I can't say that. But I know from that point on when I left them in my door, he was with me. This is the apartment that I lived in right there. Uh, right there, the second door right there. But this is Oakdale. And the enemy just really had a, a, a hold on this place, you know. When I um, went to jail, when I got my warrant out, over with, and while I was there, Chris visited me every Tuesday, every single Tuesday. And we did a retreat, and God took me through a journey. Took me through a journey. And there were some things that I didn't want to face within myself. But it was a cleansing. And Chris kept telling me, Tori, you're blessed when you're poor. I couldn't see that, because I couldn't comprehend it at that time. She kept on saying, Tori, you're gonna be okay. God got you, it's gonna be all right. And I just didn't want to believe her. And um, the missionaries with me the whole way, when I was locked up, even when I got out, and they're still with me right now. And like I said again, if it wasn't for their prayers, I don't know where I would be. And if it wasn't for them knocking on my door, and being there for me, I don't know where I would be. God haven't given up on me yet. <laughs> you know. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole wide world in his hands. He got the whole 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 wide world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got a you and me, brother. In his hands, he got a you and me, sister. In his hands, he got a you and me, brother. 
in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got the little bitty baby in his hands. He got the little bitty baby in his hands. He got the little bitty baby in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. He got a everybody here in his hands. He got a everybody here. In his hands, he got everybody here. In his hands, he got the whole world in his hands. He got the whole world in his hands. So, I'm Claudia Lindsay. I'm from the South Bend branch, and I go to Notre Dame. I'm a sophomore there. So, this summer, I'm staffing. Um, I'm running the oldest girls camp, which is girls from t the ages of 12 to 15. I went canvassing, and See, I saw, um, let's see, I went to one of the campers' houses on Murphy Street, and uh, yeah, their house, I don't even know how to describe it. It was just like, so they kind of had this apartment complex, and there's glass smashed everywhere, dirt smashed everywhere, um, trash just everywhere. There was clothes. Um, all over the place. And this wasn't inside the apartment. This was just in the like walkway. Um, and so many flies and it just smelled terrible. Um, and then when we knocked on the door, we opened the, let's see, I think it was one of the grandmas opened the door and we just saw a dark room with tons of people in there. It was crowded. And a bunch of kids came pouring out and they're maybe wearing like one piece of clothing each. I just couldn't believe what poverty it was, and I'd really never seen anything like that. A lot of yeah. it is just just dust mm -hmm. and just time. That's what it is. I worked with my dad for 40, well no, I did the work for 46 years. I worked with my dad for 34 years because he died after I had only been there 34 years. Yeah. And he, he did... My dad did furniture upholstery. My dad learned to do upholstery work when he came home from World War II. As a matter of fact, this is his machine that he he learned to sew on when he went to GI school. We went to church at Shiloh Baptist Church, which is still over in Allendale. At the time I grew up, it was at 222 St. Luke Street. But on our way to church, we had a car. There were individuals who may have been going to church from the neighborhood who, you know, maybe decided they were going to catch the bus and go to church. 
Well, my dad would sometimes, you know, stop and pick them up, drop them off at church, make a wide circle, and go on to the church. All one accord. It's easy for me to come and be around Joe. Joe, John, and I are all born. We are all born in the first four months of 1954. We get along and, and we connect because Joe and I, I think I remember, I went for Thanksgiving dinner there and we sat down and started talking about, you know, the way she told me how the things that her dad told her when Martin Luther King was assassinated. And I'm like, really? Your dad told you something? That? That's kind of what my dad told me. They we're different locations, but I'm finding out that is the thing that connects individuals who know Christ. That love of Christ is not you know it don't have a color it don't have a gender it just is and I went to the camp to read one day I was going to read one day that was all it's supposed to be one day and I went that day and I read to Mary Ann Joe's little granddaughter and another little boy and we read two stories and we read those two stories probably ten times each and I guess that's the part of me that enjoys going to the school for reading workshop because those young children need to know how to read. They need to know that. But I think that what God is doing is He's showing us just the way, kind of like at the Tower of Babel. We can all sit and be your house, my house, this house, that house. Or we can not try to come together to build a temple to heaven, but we can come together and live a life that gets us to heaven because we've learned how to work together, to live together, and do as he said in his final commandment, a new commandment I give you, that you love one another as I have loved you. That's just, I mean, but that's, like I said, that's my point of view. I don't have to be right. week we had a pretty sad occurrence a 15 uh, year old boy was was shot and killed just two blocks away from us over on Talbot Street um, it was on the uh, June 25th and it was it was a little surprising we haven't had we've had a couple shootings but not not that's not a regular occurrence here in our neighborhood um, and the boy was actually a friend of one of the guys we've gotten to know really well over the course of our past 10 years here on the south side. We've kind of seen him grow up. So what happened with little Mikey is a group of four people, I don't know who, shot his house up, shot him through the window. I've known him since he was nine, nine years old. I've known that we'll do since he was nine years old. That was my best friend. Uh, I lose everybody I love. Like that's, I don't know so many people. It's crazy. But, you feel me? If you ask me what the people of praise, you know, what, what I what I think that people of praise is doing, uh, but the people of praise, uh, they've known me for, since I was probably a, like 12, 11, and I've just been rocking it, kicking it with them for, for years and years, and I, like I told Russ, Mr. Mike, Miss Naomi, 
they are the people, like, if it wasn't for them and also my grandparents, I don't know where I would be right now. Um, the people of praise are wonderful people. They're kind-hearted, um, and they just want to help the community. Uh, I, lo I love the people of praise. Like I said, you feel me? They made me who I am today. And without Russ, Mr. Mike, and etc., my life would not be where it is right now. And I know that because the person I was before them and who I am now, they made they bettered me. Like they made me more of a man. Mr. Hanging out with Mr. Mike, hey, I was with him for forever. He was teaching me guitar. Mr. Mike, I love him. You know? Mr. Mike, all of them. I love all of them. You know, they're great people. It was not all peaches and cream with me. I I have a real bad temper. Um, I was in the streets doing a lot of stupid stuff when I was younger. But people with praise took me in, started hanging with them. They they showed me that there was a better way to live your life, you know. Um, you know, they, they, they actually showed me that, you know, there is people out there that actually care and will love you unconditionally without being family. Like, and I love them. I remember Ellen. She knocked on our door. At first, we didn't know, we were kind of scared to open the door because we didn't know um, who the people were from People of Praise. And at that moment, I will say that I would not regret opening that door because after that, our lives changed. They talked to us about some account that they were gonna, you know, open around here for the children. After she explained about what the camp was, my parents actually decided to actually let my nephew and my niece, my nieces actually, because I have now two, to go to camp. And then from there, the kids been going to camp for about maybe two years. And they love it. They just love it. God had changed this neighborhood around. He brought amazing people to fix this neighborhood up, to lift it up, to just take all everything that's bad away from here. Now kids, they just run around, they're happy. They're out in the streets now just just laughing. Like you can just hear like children from over there, children from like just here yelling, screaming, it's just happiness. And I was like, wow, I was like, they really lifted this neighborhood up and now it's just a beautiful neighborhood to live in. Um. Be 
careful when it comes. Be ready when it comes.